And I'll share one story, and maybe some of you, some of the other panelists have experienced this, but when I was at Yale and the faculty there, I was living in one of the, in one of the student dorms, and in a summer program that I taught, a student revealed that she had suicidal thoughts, and I have to admit, I felt scandalized. I didn't know what to do. I was terribly worried, and the advice I was given was to sit down with her and, and have a conversation, and that was helpful advice, and it did work well, but then... I asked her to lunch again, and in that conversation, I felt like I was breaking an unwritten rule where I told her why I thought her life had meaning and value. She had been raised in an atheist household, and she had told me that she thought when we die, we are simply specks of dust that go back into the earth. And I shared with her that I was a Catholic and that the reason I thought her life had meaning was because God had created her in love and that the end of her life was to grow in love and that I believed one day she would come to experience that love in some way. Now, I had that conversation, I must admit, with a lot of trepidation because I thought at a secular university that's not something you're supposed to say. But the student's reaction really got me. She didn't say very much in that moment, but she went out all around New Haven because I had actually looked for Christmas cards in New Haven and couldn't find any. I just found like joy or something, but no Jesus or Mary or Joseph. She got a card with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on it and put it on my door and gave me a Christmas card and thanked me for my open thoughts and big hugs. So one thing I've learned as a cradle Catholic is that people who were not raised in faith are open when you are willing to share with them how yeah. you answer the meaning of life. And what I find mm -hmm. sometimes happens in universities is we blow open the question about the meaning of life, and then we refuse to say how it is that we answer it. 